The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. We want to jump right into SQL Server Maintenance Solution presented by Brad Franz this morning. I just want to remind you two things. We're going to record this webinar, so if you want to look back at it later, it's going to be up on the website later on today, so that's Anovia.com. And if you have any questions, just type them right into that question box. I will read them out and get them answered for you. So without further ado, Brad, I'm going to hand it right over to you. Sure. So thanks for joining everybody. Um, I can see a list of, of folks. It looks like we have several customers and maybe one or two internal Innovia folks on the presentation. Uh, wanted to mention when Abby sent this out, I believe we have an hour of time allotted for the webinar today, but I actually don't think we will, we will go the full hour. I'm kind of expecting about 30 minutes here, between 30 and excuse me, 45 minutes. Uh, the reason for that, we're going to show what, what we think is a pretty powerful and excellent solution. Um, it's very simple and powerful to, to really dig in deep to this solution, get into some of the specifics, would require more than, more than an hour, and we can show all the basics that are going to provide the bulk of the benefit in substantially less time. So. With that, let me move a window around here. So I just wanted to share a little bit about, about myself. Um, Abby gave me some feedback on my presentation that it should include a picture. So I picked a, a picture I prefer more than my business, business picture. Uh, my title at Inovia is Senior Development Consultant slash Mentor. I've been working with NAV for more than 10 years, actually worked for Innovia slash ABC Computers twice. Originally from 2003 through 2007, I went and worked for another NAV solution center that's located out in the Pacific Northwest uh, from 2007 until 12, and then left, left NAV altogether for a couple of years. Uh, but returned to Inovia in 2014 and, and have been enjoying my time back ever since. Uh, when I left the NAV community, I, I left to pursue an interest in uh, data warehousing and ETL projects, um, business intelligence systems. So I, I spent a couple of years working in a SQL Server environment on those types of projects uh, for a local insurance company. A substantially larger organization than than Innovia. Um, also wanted to mention that in the past I, I also certified on SQL Server implementation and administ administration. I haven't looked recently, but it's it's something I'm also interested in doing. There are so many new new features available in the, the latest releases of SQL Server. I'm looking forward to dig into those a bit more. So I'm getting ready for this, this, this webinar, I'm trying to think about why, you know, why would we, why would we care about this? As, as a technology partner, uh, Inovia is often tasked with, with helping to set up uh, maintenance plans, backup, backup kind of plans, disaster recovery plans for our customer organizations. Historically, that, that's been a relatively manual process in SQL Server. There, there's a whole suite of functionality available to a SQL Server organization, but it has often required a significant amount of time both in terms of planning and literally implementing uh, a, a backup plan for the database or databases on a SQL Server. Uh, time to plan that, time to literally create those plans and implement them and then, and then follow up on those. Uh, relatively recently, we, we came up on the, the solution that we'll present today, the maintenance solution. Uh, and it handles much of the the creation and configuration of 
backup and optimization jobs for us. It, it really simplifies that. So we, we put together a scenario here. Uh, and we're imagining, imagine your SQL Server, you know, your, your hardware has just been destroyed. Be a hardware failure, whatever, natural disaster, fire, what do you do now? Uh, we need to have a disaster recovery and a backup plan. Um, when we think about those plans, we should be thinking about, you know, what the cost of downtime is to our organization, depending on, depending on the type of your environment. You know, picture employees standing around doing nothing, machines not running because we don't know what we should what we should be making. We, we, we can't access the information system that helps us understand what, what we should work on next. Um, literal direct costs can, can come in the form of supply chain interruption. We, maybe for a period of time we can keep the, we can keep, keep the machines running and people busy, but loss of access to an information system results in uh, you know, supply chain interruption. Uh, we haven't ordered replacement inventory because we didn't know how much we should order or even whom we should order from. Uh, lots of indirect costs associated with downtime or a, or a disaster relative to information systems. Missed sales opportunities, it, it hurts our reputation with customers and suppliers. Uh, impacts the, the confidence our employees have on, a, on our organization. And the, the last one here often is not thought about a whole lot, but just the opportunity cost. All the time we spend fighting a fire is likely time that would have been spent doing something else that we probably would consider more productive. Included a slide here to, uh, to illustrate a real-world scenario that has happened to an Inovia customer literally within the past month. Um, organization engaged in a good faith effort to assist one of their associates. Um, that effort, for reasons I'm, I'm not going to cover here, but it, it produced some, some weird things in the power supply for their facility that impacted their, their hardware, their infrastructure that was running NAV. Servers were starting and stopping repeatedly in a very short period of time. Their battery backup was not functioning as expected. Um, literal components in, in servers failed. I use the word fried in here. We, we lost access to hard drives. Um, machines were not running properly. We had literal corruption on, on some hard drives. As we got into troubleshooting the infrastructure issue, we discovered there really was not a disaster recovery or backup plan in place. The, the most recent backup file that was accessible to us was well over a year old. We, we couldn't access backups that had been run recently because they were on specifically on a device that was no longer accessible. Fortunately, hard drives that contained their, their, their NAV SQL Server database were accessible, but the database was showing up in Management Studio as suspect. We ran some built-in tools in SQL Server and discovered that our only option was to use uh, a particular built-in stored procedure in SQL Server to recover that database, but we, we were only able to execute that stored procedure setting a particular parameter to indicate we were okay with data loss. Today that NAV database is online generally appears to be working well, but we, we couldn't say with a significant amount of confidence that no data loss has occurred in that environment. We had to do it. It was their only option because of 
um, be, because of the, the plan that had been in place and, and probably some limitations that had been experienced early on in the in the NAV and the SQL Server setup process. So the solution we're going to pre present, it's free. I'm, I'm calling it open source because we have the ability to examine the solution in its entire entirety. There, there's, there is not additional software that we, were, we will be installing. We'll simply be running a script that is going to create some native SQL Server objects. SQL agent jobs. This, this tool is going to add some stored procedures to our database. And the combination of those objects allow us to implement an automated backup and optimization solution. We have the ability to look at all of the code before we would execute uh, before we execute the, the solution in SQL Server. We can literally look at everything this thing is doing. And we can examine what it has done after the fact. Let's see, so let's go out and take a look. So the maintenance solution is available through olahologren.com. Uh, what we'll be looking at today is the entire solution. You can download. You can download this solution in bits and pieces, just the backup components, as an example, or just the optimization components. But we'll take a look at the the entire solution. A couple of prerequisites for implementing this. I don't believe it's a a requirement that the user running the script be a sys administrator. I'm, I'm sure we could do this with some other level of permission. In the, in the typical organization that Innovia is working with, however, my suggestion would be we identify either an existing system administrator account that we can use to execute the maintenance solution scripts, or temporarily we, we allow somebody sysadmin level of permissions. We need to have SQL Server agent installed and running. Uh, again, there are some specifics here about configuring SQL Server agent that, that we could address or questions potentially that would come up that we could answer offline. There are some best practices with, with how we run the SQL Server agent. Additionally, we're going to want to have a backup location identified ahead of time. My recommendation on backups for SQL Server, we'd like to be backing up our databases to to drive resources, hardware resources that are that are physically separate from the server or the host uh, that our databases are run from. Those backup files ideally then get included or vacuumed up, if you will, into a uh, they, they get included as part of some other enterprise backup plan. And Finally, I wanted to point out this solution does support backing up to Azure, what do they call it, blob storage, <clears throat> which becomes a, a very interesting option in my mind. Before we move on, one of the questions that comes up from time to time is, why do we want to be why do we want to be backing up from SQL Server at all? Why wouldn't we use just some, some other enterprise backup solution to grab our databases? Uh, my, my response to that is that 
it, it's a good practice to have SQL Server creating full differential and transaction log backups of your, your SQL databases. It's a best practice in the event uh, you determine it's, it's necessary to recover. You know, recover a database, restore a database. <clears throat> When our, when our backup plan for SQL in, includes native backups, we can probably a little more quickly restore a database to a point in time uh, relative to what we might be doing through an enterprise backup solution. Uh, typically, those are grabbing a full backup of your environment, maybe on a daily basis. Uh, very often, they are not they're not giving you the transactional level backups that, that we'd like to be running periodically, you know, every five minutes, ten minutes throughout the work day. So again, if, if we're executing backups natively from within SQL Server, we get a little more flexibility and probably a, a little quicker recovery in the event that becomes necessary. A couple of things I wanted to point out in SQL Server here. So we're running, we're going to demo on a, on a local instance. I have an instance of SQL Server 2014 running on my workstation. In this environment, we have my Anovia account configured as System Administrator. There are, whoop, sorry about that. When we install SQL Server, there are some default settings related to the location of backups. We configure SQL Server. We can set defaults related to where our data files live, where our log files live, and where backup files go. I'm showing this because in this solution, we, we can pick our own backup location if we did not specify a specific backup directory. SQL Server would still run and it would, it would send our backups to a default location, which is in the program files, basically the same directory that, that SQL Server is installed in. This is actually less than, less than ideal. Again, we, we would like this to be on some target other than our literal SQL Server host. SQL Server Agent. We had listed that as a prerequisite for this solution. It's a prerequisite in that if we want automated backups to run, we need to have SQL Server Agent installed and configured. If you do a default install of SQL Server, there's a very good chance in your environment you would see Very good chance you would see SQL Agent in the Object Explorer, but with an icon. I'm not sure how well this is coming across today, but it would be showing you the stopped indicator. You might be seeing Agent Extended Procedures disabled.
Sorry about this. I clicked stop and I meant I actually did not want to do that. We should have the agent running once again. Okay, and so for our demo here today, if we look at my instance of SQL Server, we're going to see we, we really don't have any databases here. We've, we've got a report server and a report server temp DB. But we need to have, or we would like to have, a few databases out there. So I have a script that I am going to run. So you just populate a few We're going to create a few database shells, if you will. And if we refresh here now, you can see all I was doing was creating a handful of databases. Reason for that is we, we want to see this thing actually work when I install it. We're going to go up to the Maintenance Solution website. We'll download this. So I opened it in Notepad. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy and paste all of this. We could download and save the .sql file. and then open it from within a new query window. When we look at, at the solution, there are some comments up in this section. I'll show just a, a few basics about about this solution. When I talked about a, a backup directory, if we recall seeing in, in SQL Server Management Studio, SQL tracks a default location for backups associated with all of our databases. In this solution, we can specify an alternate backup. The cleanup time parameter relates to how long backup Backups will be retained. I'm, I'm not going to specify a time in hours in our demonstration here today. Uh, where we've implemented this for other customers, though, we've, we've typically allowed for two weeks, which I believe is, that's roughly 100, what would that be? Roughly 300 hours. Um, and again, the, the cleanup time parameter, if we put a value in here, it's the time in hours after which old backup files will be deleted as part of this solution. We can out, output some logging if we would like to file directories, and we can also log the commands that we are executing, essentially our, our job history, to a table within SQL Server. These are all of the default values. Any one of those can, can be changed. 
that, that would be a part of your normal planning process. Identify cleanup time. Do we need to be logging the, the results of our jobs to a literal directory or is simply storing these in a table adequate? I do need to make sure I need to make sure my backup directory exists, and it does, and I want to show you that it is empty. So there's a lot of SQL Server syntax in here, but essentially what this solution is going to do, it does add a, a couple of tables. Uh, to a database that we specify. I'm, I'm going to leave this as default and it, it's going to create a table in the master database. <clears throat> but we can see in in this solution, if SQL Server object continues scrolling down, it's going to do some more work, and we'll see it creating an optimized stored procedure. directories. Okay. Sorry about all of that. Let me let me jump at the beginning of this so that we can see the objects that will be created. So it creates a stored procedure, command execute. That stored procedure literally executes the work this solution is going to do. It creates a database backup procedure, integrity check procedure. Optimization start procedure, and effectively that is it. So let me execute this. We can see currently there we do not see any user defined stored procedures in the master database. And here are the procedures the, the backup solution created. The other thing it created for us are the SQL Server agent jobs. Full backup job associated with system databases, user potential, user full, log backup job, integrity check jobs, and the optimization job. At this point, we have everything we need um, aside from schedules associated with those jobs. What I want to demonstrate, though, is we are going to execute the full backup job. We're going to do this manually full backups for all of our user databases. And again, let me show my backup directory currently. It is empty.
because in this environment, all of our databases were, were just empty shells, this job ran very quickly. And when we look at the backup directory that I had specified in the script, we can see it added a folder, which represents my SQL Server instance. Inside of that instance folder, it created folders for each of our databases that exist on the server. And if we look within these, we executed the full backup job. There's a folder there. And within the full folder, we can see our backup of the database. If we want to now do a differential, we could execute this job. And similarly, if we go into our instance folder, now we can see that job, it recognized the differential folder did not exist, created the, that folder, and there is our differential backup. <coughs> so what, what would we do next with this solution? I, I mentioned before, the, the last thing that we would likely want to do we got to this point, we could execute these manually. We would want to create some schedules. And, and that's where, that is where some planning comes in on your part. We'd want to determine how often are we going to do a full backup of our databases. Can, can we do that? Are, are our databases small enough? Or does our organization work in such a way that we can literally do those every day? Do we need to implement a plan? that involves maybe a once a week full backup with periodic differential backups throughout the week. But we, we could go to these jobs today and define our schedules. So that is, that is the solution in a nutshell. What we just did and what we looked at uh, gets you most of the way to, to putting a you know, disaster recovery solution in place for your SQL Server. Oh, I wanted to touch on notification and workflow. In SQL Server, we can configure notification. This, this solution will not do this for you out of the box. But SQL Server can be configured to notify people when a, when a job runs, when it succeeds, when it fails. There is some additional configuration that would be would be required. Not terribly difficult, but it does take a little time. We won't show it today. It involves configuring database mail and defining in SQL in SQL Server agent we do have to define operators. Operators are essentially the the recipients the individuals that SQL Server can communicate with. Workflow was the other, the other item. Within SQL Server, you, you can string jobs together. Uh, you can create a workflow that, depending on success or failure of a task, other, other activities are triggered. But again, that, that is outside of the scope of this solution. We just wanted people to be aware that it is a possibility. Just a quick summary. 
disaster recovery and backup, the, it, it's, it really is critical that you have a plan. The, the way I describe the way I describe this conversation, it, it tends to be very important, but very often not terribly urgent. We install a, a new server and, and we bring an instance of SQL Server up to a running state. Everything is running fine. We have lots of other pressing requests for our time. We, we, in my experience, we tend to overlook this area. It doesn't get the attention it, it probably deserves. Downtime is avoidable and manageable. And again, spending a little bit of time planning and, and, and utilizing some tools to, to implement our plans, we really can avoid and manage the, the downtime that we might experience. Uh, in today's day and age, with the, the nature of SQL Server and other tools that are available to us, data loss really should be viewed as unacceptable. It, it is 100% avoidable or preventable, but we do, as, as Inovia, we, we do see instances where this still occurs and it's, it's because the other planning is not, not taking place. We avoid some cost up front, either direct cost in the form of software or time. We avoid that cost up front, we end up paying for it later. And just wanted to encourage everybody to check out Maintenance Solution. With minimal configuration, you get, you get the, the bulk of, a, of the benefit. You get a solution that, that we use internally, other organizations are using. It's quite simple to set up. And uh, you know, we, we can also help with that. But that is not a requirement. The solution allows us to focus on the, I added this comment, what should we be doing and actually doing those things rather than how do I do? You know, very often if we are configuring maintenance plans in SQL Server manually, we spend a significant amount of time with, with the how do I actually do this? I don't have enough familiarity in SQL Server to effectively get this stuff configured. With that, let's see, it is 1042. I'll, I will open up to questions. All right, great. We do have a few questions here, Brad. Our first question, Okay. Uh, once I've put SQL maintenance solution in place, I don't have to pay attention to my backups anymore? Is that right? That's not right. I feel like I know who asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that is, that is not, right, so that's, this is a, a simple, powerful, reliable solution, um, but it's not a set it and forget it solution. Part of your, part of your disaster recovery and backup plan needs to be a, a process, a procedure to periodically check up on, on the solution you've put in place. Periodically we need, to, we need to come out to our backup directory, you know, and, and drill in. If, if we have a single SQL server, we need to go look, you know, are my files actually there? We need to take a look at the. Oops, sorry. We need to come out and look at the history associated with with the jobs that were configured by maintenance plan. Ideally, we would. Ideally, we would test our ability to recover. Maintenance Solution says it has been backing up these databases. <clears throat> I 
can I actually restore, <coughs> excuse me, can I actually restore a database from my backup file? You can see when I when I executed the back or the restore database task, it wants to restore from backups it knows are out here associated with demo one database. I'm going to restore from from that backup to a new database called demo one underscore maintenance solution test. And there's our new database. Now we could go into this and look at some of the table data and assuming things look good there, we know our solution is working. Other questions? All right, great. Our next question, let me get it up here. What if I install the solution but later decide I want to remove it? Oh, good. That is another good question. We will, I, I have actually developed scripts that would remove this solution from the environment. When, when we installed this, if we recall, all this thing really was doing was adding a handful of stored procedures into our environment creating a handful of jobs, we can remove these manually. Or we could execute another we could ex execute sorry, another script. to delete the jobs, drop the, the stored procedures. Other questions? Yes, our next question. I am not terribly familiar with TSQL or queries in SQL Server. Can you help me install the solution and confirm it's running as expected? Absolutely. We, we can absolutely help with that. We, we saw how easy, one, once we have our prerequisites in place, we saw how quickly and easily this solution can be implemented on a SQL Server. Um, Honestly, what, what takes more time in terms of adopting this solution, I, I alluded to some planning associated with how frequently do we back up, how long do we retain backup files. Um, in, in a helping a customer implement this solution, we, we would spend more time on the, the planning aspect um, ensuring those, those prerequisites are in place and you know, a little bit of follow-up monitoring and probably some training as well. We'd spend more time on those efforts than literally installing the solution. In a typical environment, uh, in a typical NAV SQL Server environment, my suggestion would be allow for a day's worth of time probably over the course of two or three days to, to perform all of, all of those steps. It's a very good chance it would be less than that. Okay, great. And we have one more question here, Brad. Do I have okay. to work through Inovia to adopt this solution on my own? No. No. If a customer is familiar with SQL Server, we, 
you can get this solution today and implement it on your own. Abby, we'll, we'll be sharing the, the PowerPoint, is that correct? That's exactly right, Brad. It's going to be up on our website by the end of the day. Okay. So the, the URL, olahollegren.com, is included a couple of times in the PowerPoint. You can go out here today and get this solution, implement on your own, if, if you're comfortable doing that. Fantastic. Well, Brad, that was some awesome real-world information so that our customers can get this solution and get it going for themselves with our help or on their own. So thank you so much for that stellar presentation. I also want to remind everybody, look for the recording on our website this afternoon. It's going to be up at Innovia.com. And thank you for joining us for this webinar. We hope to see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.